Hi, I'm AJ, and I'm really excited to share with you my experience and my process for making this rug. This is the biggest rug I've ever made, and it was so much fun and definitely a learning experience. But let's start at the beginning. So first I used a projector to project this image onto my tufting fabric here, which is stretched very, very tightly across my frame. And this is the image that I drew on. And then I just got to tufting using my trusty cut pile gun from tuftinggun.com. What I like to do, especially when I'm working with very crisp lines, I like to go in with hair clippers and trim those lines down to remove all of the yarn that's kind of splayed out, which results in a crisper line. For this piece, I actually sculpted the inside of this border with kind of a rounded edge here so that it would create a really strong distinction between the border edge and the sky and clouds within the border. And I'm really happy with the results of that. As you can see, there are microfibers everywhere. And so I always make sure to wear a face mask when I am sculpting. Then I moved on to the clouds, and the clouds you see here used up two full yarn cones, just to give you an idea of how much yarn it took me to make this whole rug. Here I am finishing the clouds in real time, and then I like to pull out all of the little strings from the cut pile gun. I used to trim them, but now I just tug them out. Can't forget to stretch. Very important. Here are the finished little clouds. As you can see, because of that sculpted edge, there's a line between the white on the border and the white of the cloud, which I'm really happy with. And now I'm just subtly trimming the borders of the clouds to make them more crisp. And now for the sky, my favorite part. This was really fun to tuft because it allowed me to use a lot of really long lines. I was able to use vertical lines for most of this rug, which is just really satisfying to tuft in straight vertical and long lines like that. The sky that you see here, that also took two cones of yarn, and I use the three-ply wool from tuftinggun.com, and I use two strings of yarn at a time. Here we have another two cones of yarn down on the sky, so that's four total. I think for the sky I used nearly six cones. In total, I used 12 full cones of yarn, plus a little bit more. There's the finished tufted piece. But there is still much to do in order to back and finish this large rug. For the first time, I used this liquid latex here by Fiberlock, which I definitely have some thoughts and feelings on. I am also pairing it with this secondary backing fabric. I will share a link in the description that describes a little bit more about secondary backing fabric and this finishing approach 
but it essentially involves laying down the liquid latex and then placing the secondary backing fabric on top of it while it's still wet to create a solid grid that keeps everything in place. I realized that it was going to be easier for me to just lay my frame down so that I could cut this secondary backing fabric down to the right size. I got this fabric from an awesome Etsy supplier which I will link below. Now before I got gluing, I opened my window to let out those nasty fumes. This glue definitely has them. I'm not sure why I assumed that liquid latex would have less VOCs and toxins than some of these other carpet adhesives, but I was definitely wrong. There's formaldehyde in this stuff, so unfortunately I didn't get any closer to finding a less toxic alternative in this product. But honestly, this glue smells so bad. I ended up wearing two face masks while I applied it. Actually, like, made my eyes water. It kind of reminded me of getting my hair dyed with bleach. So please be careful and only use it in a well-ventilated area. Now I'm laying the secondary backing fabric over top of the liquid latex that I just laid down. This was my first time doing this and there's really not that much information online about this technique. I just was intuitively doing my thing here. What I realized needed to be done was that the fabric needed to be really tightly smushed down into the liquid latex to kind of spread the fabric out evenly. So I found it really helpful to just wear gloves and use my hands to smush all of the liquid latex in. And then I'm also placing just a thin layer of liquid latex on top of the fabric just to make sure everything is super, super saturated and it's evenly distributed all across the fabric. I actually ended up using this whole bucket of liquid latex, which I was not expecting to do, and the whole bucket was $70. I'm not sure if I'll buy this product again considering its high cost and awful smell and toxicity. It would be awesome if there was a low VOC liquid latex option, but I don't even, I don't know if something like that exists. And if it does, it's very hard to find. With all of that being said, I'm actually super happy with how it turned out. This is the final product. It does yellow a little bit, which like isn't super cute, but I love how it feels because it reminds me of the back of commercially produced rugs that have that kind of grid backing. And as you can see, it's very secure, like this isn't going anywhere. But I do know that one potential negative to liquid latex is that it might deteriorate over time. So, you know, years down the line, I could potentially see some issues. Now here I am excitedly cutting my rug out. The moment I've been waiting for. Stoked. My dog and I just couldn't help ourselves. Of course, we had to do a proper rug cuddle as soon as we could, and I think he approves. I'm flipping it over because we have to finish the edge. Given that this is the first time I used this liquid latex, I think I was a little bit too generous around the edge of the rug, and it became clear to me that this is going to be pretty tough to fold over. But once I did fold that edge over, I would use this product here called Twill Tape to cover the organic edge of the tufting fabric to create a nice clean finish. And now I am gluing and cutting the fabric into strips so that I can glue those down individually. And then you'll see that's kind of what the final look will look like. So now I'm just taking it in sections with a ton of glue and pushing it down. You see that I have a brick there which I placed on top of it because like I said, this liquid latex is really tough. It took a lot of sustained pressure to keep it down and a ton of glue. 
The good thing about the liquid latex was that it created a seal in the fabric so I could actually touch the fabric without getting glue on my hand. So now I am going through and adding the twill tape. The main purpose of this is to cover that raw edge, but it also does help reinforce the binding with glue. Alright y'all, we are getting so close to the end here. Just some finishing touches. I like to use some nice fabric scissors to clean the edge up a bit. And then I just did a really quick trim with my hair clippers to clean off any stray or long pieces of yarn. Of course, I had to do a final vacuum. Now, cue dramatic reveal shots in three, two, one. so happy with this rug this was a gift to myself from myself and I'm just so glad I have this place where I can melt into the ground and become the sky thank you so much for watching feel free to drop any comments down below and I will talk to y'all soon bye